Well, good morning. No, it's hard to believe, but it's already time to start talking about the second paper and the second set of readings for the class. Now, one thing that uh, I hope I mentioned early on in one of my videos uh, that I'd like to repeat now is that when we have a day that a paper is due, like today, where papers come in, I always assign the next paper, the next paper assignment. So that leaves you at least two weeks to work on it. Um, and it gives you a couple weeks to do the reading for it and to really think about it and to send me drafts. It gives me the time also to give you other videos and suggestions on it. So we're moving on now from the Mike Rose reading and the Toni Morrison reading into this second batch of essays and the second assignment. So just a couple of things before I talk a little bit about the uh, Susan Sontag reading, which is the main focus and the main uh, foundation for the second assignment, is uh, please make sure that you go into Blackboard and under the reading and writing and quizzes folder, uh, take a look at the assignment for paper number two. I'll make another video where I go through those directions as I did for paper number one, uh, but they're very clear. They're, they're written in the same way as the assignment for paper number one, where they talk about the due date and the formatting and all the other information that you need to know for this particular assignment. What's different about this one, and this is something you're going to see going forward, is that there are three prompts for this one. So you have an option, and the choices for this essay of the three prompts come from the Susan Sontag reading called On Photography, which is in the folder for paper number two. So in a second, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I developed that prompt or those prompts and how they fit in with the reading itself. So I'll get to that in a second. Um, what you'll also notice is that there's another reading that is attached to this one, and that's the Dwayne Johnson piece. Yes, that is The Rock. This is an excerpt from his autobiography that he published while he was still working as a professional wrestler before he made that transition into to being a, a movie star and a Hollywood producer, and which is how we know him better today. Uh, you, you probably know him primarily uh, as a movie star, but he did get his start as a, as a very popular wrestler in the 90s and into the early 2000s. And so the excerpt from his book... Uh, talks a little bit about how he got into that business. And so I like it as, as a kind of a bridge from paper number one and the readings of Toni Morrison and Mike Rose into this one because we are seeing him talk about work and what he calls the uh, the family business. He says he's he's a third generation worker um, in the family business at one point in the, in the readings. But the other thing you're going to notice about his piece is that it's filled with family photographs. And as you can tell from the Susan Sontag title, that's what we're going to be talking about in this next assignment. And that's the reason actually that I also gave you that photograph of Mike Rose's mom, Rosie, in those extra notes that were on Blackboard, because I, I like that as another bridge and another connection to this essay. I hope that you find as we go forward that all the essays and all the readings build on each other. Uh, they have themes that connect uh, their skills, obviously, that you're developing that will connect together. And so with this second paper, uh, in addition to the fact that there are three prompts and you choose one of them, so you'll choose one of the three uh, to do your next paper on, this paper also is a little bit different than the first one. It's less of a narrative paper, and it's more of what you could call an expository or analytical paper, because in this one, you will be responding to some of Susan Sontag's ideas directly and giving your opinion on them. There will be room in this essay for a little bit of narrative on the photograph that you choose to write about, but you'll also have to respond to direct quotations from Sontag herself and some of her ideas. So to get you started on that, I want to highlight a part of the Susan Sontag reading that is really significant. It's where I develop the writing prompts for this paper from. Um, and I've given these prompts quite a few times over the last few years, and, and I always get very interesting essays back uh, from this assignment, uh, particularly because of the variety that you have to choose from in, in developing the essay. So if you have your Susan Sontag on photography reading in front of you, I have a printout of it here that I'm going to use, but you can just look it up on your tablet or on your, your laptop or your computer. Um, I want you to pay very close attention to page eight because on page eight of the reading, at the very top of the page, after this paragraph, this is coming from a longer uh, chapter uh, in the book that it's from. So you're really starting the essay, the reading of the essay here uh, at the top of page eight. And she gives you what essentially is a three-point thesis. 
which is sort of what you did in paper number one, you know, in putting together those three skills that you were going to discuss over the course of the paper. And so she does the very same thing here. She, she puts down for you in the first paragraph of this section of the reading, those three major points that she wants to talk about in the course of the next couple of pages. And here's what she says. Now, <clears throat> before I get any further, excuse me, <laughs> uh, I did want to mention that this reading is very different than the first couple that we did. It's very different than the Johnson also, which is, is more of a narrative. Uh, it's an analytical essay itself, and so you want to read it slowly. And I'm going to do another couple of videos where I talk about the different sections of it. This is a great essay also to read with a dictionary in front of you. Never be afraid to look something up. If there's a word that you're not familiar with, don't be afraid of it. Take your dictionary out if you have a regular print dictionary or if you look it up on your tablet, whatever you, uh, whatever you use to look words up, have it for this kind of an essay because you're going to notice that she uses certain words or phrases that you're not familiar with, but that's okay. You'll learn a lot by looking at the vocabulary that she uses. And of course, if as you're reading you have any questions, please let me know if there's anything that I can help you with. But essentially what this is, is an analysis of three different types of photographs. So she mentions family photographs. That's the first part of this reading. Then she talks about photographs taken on vacations, sometimes family vacations or really any vacation. And then the third type of photograph that she writes about are news photographs. So those could be things that appear in newspapers and magazines today. This, this was written in the 1970s, um, so long before the internet became something everybody had access to. Um, she talks about those kinds of photos, but now they would be kind of the kind of news images that we would see online on any news websites, maybe even on social media. So, so when you're reading that part of the essay, you may want to think of it in a more contemporary context than what she was familiar with back in the late 1970s. She passed away in the mid-2000s, probably about 15, 14 or 15 years ago. She, so she did live long enough to see the prevalence of, of the internet. And she was alive long enough to see the beginnings of social media. But unfortunately, she passed away before she could develop this these ideas and apply them to the world and the, the media world that we live in today. But I think a lot of her points are still valid. So what are those points? And as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, she tells you the three major points that she wants to develop. So at the top of page eight, she says the following. She says, photography is mainly a social right, a defense against anxiety, and a tool of power. Okay, so those are the three things that she, she mentions in this article. Now, let me put this my little uh, handy board up here for a second. So these are the three things she mentions on page eight. Again, photography as a social right, which would mean family photographs. So that's the first example that she uses. She says there are certain photographs that are used for developing family connections and social bonds. Then she talks about photography as a defense against anxiety. That's the part of her article where she discusses vacation photos. And she makes the argument that people take a lot of photos on vacation because they're in an unfamiliar place and they're trying to get situated and they're trying to get grounded and they're trying to feel comfortable. And so they take too many photographs in some cases because they're trying to uh, lessen that feeling of being displaced or feeling anxious. And then lastly, she says that it can also be used as a tool of power. And that's the part of the article that you're reading that applies to news photographs. She also talks about photographs and images used for propaganda purposes in the last part of this article. So she structures the essay that you're reading around those three major points. Family photos, which she connects to the idea of a social right or social connections. Vacation photos, which she connects to the idea of feeling uncomfortable or anxious when you're traveling and trying to get situated and grounded. And then lastly, she talks about the power of news images, photographs or images that are in the news and how we respond to them and how we think about them. So those are the three major points that she's developing. So what I would like you to do as you are reading this article and you're thinking about those three different pieces that she's talking about, I want you to think about which kind of photo you would like to write about for paper number two. So I think you can probably see where this is going already. So what type of photo would you want to write an essay about? Would it be an old family photograph? 
Would it be a photograph from maybe a recent family trip or vacation with some friends? Or would you like to do something that's more third person, more objective, something that's a recent photo that is has been in the news that you could write about and analyze using some of her ideas. So again, this paper will be a bit of a hybrid. You will have an opportunity to do some of the narrative kind of writing that you did for paper number one, but you'll also have the opportunity to respond to her arguments. I should stress, you don't have to agree with every point that she makes about photography and how it affects us and how we interpret it. You can argue against some of her ideas if you'd like to, and I'll talk about that more in some other videos as we go forward. But that's the reading that you're looking at. So Sontag is really the foundation, as I said, for paper number two. So I want you to read that. Read the Johnson piece along with it, because the, the Dwayne Johnson is filled with these family photographs. And so you'll see how he uses those family photos of his grandparents, of his parents, of, of himself when he was a little kid, and how that helps him tell the story. So this piece is kind of a bridge from paper number one into this essay. And then the Susan Sontag reading, which is also up there on Blackboard in the folder for paper number two, is going to give you something to respond to with your second paper. Okay, so those are the two readings that I want you to be taking a look at now that you've, you've finished up and sent in paper number one. I'll be getting those back to you next week with the grades and with my comments on them. Please let me know if you have any questions about these two readings. I'm gonna post some other videos about them, talk a little bit more about the assignment. We have plenty of time to work on it over the next two weeks. Um, but take a look at them. Uh, I hope you enjoy them, particularly the Dwayne Johnson. There's a lot of fun. It's just as charming um, and uh, funny and, and moving as you would expect it to be because that's sort of his persona in the films as well, right? Uh, his persona even, even in public. So it has that sense of humor that I hope you enjoy. The Sontag can be a little bit more challenging, um, but just take your time with it. You'll get it. Have a dictionary out. Ask me questions. I'll post other videos and some other notes about it over the next uh, few days and over the next week or so. So we have plenty of time to work on these um, over the next two weeks. All right. So if you have any questions, as I always say, please send me an email uh, and I will see you soon.